G'day everyone. This part we are going to be making our icing look less like a hat and more like icing which dribbles down. So I'm in edit mode on my icing here. And uh, first thing to note is that because we added the solidify modifier in the last step, um, you can't see most of this this mesh underneath it. Um, so with the solidify modifier, if we just uncheck that last box, it'll just disable it whilst you're in edit mode. So in object mode and rendering mode, you'll still see it, which is good because that's where you need it, but it'll be disabled in edit mode. So that's good. So um, we want to give, we want to make like this part of the mesh, like we want to dribble it down, but we don't have enough of these vertices, these little dots. We don't have enough of those um, to add detail. So what I want to do is I'm going to select the mesh by hitting A. That's how you select all in, in Blender. Um, or Alt A will deselect everything, by the way. And that is a common shortcut, whether you're in object mode, select all, Alt A, or edit mode, select all, Alt A. It's a, it's a widely used shortcut. Um, anyway, so I'm going to select everything. And what the heck did I just do then? Okay, select everything, and then I'm gonna right click on the mesh, and the top option there is subdivide. So what that has done, as it has, for every square that was there before, it has added in four squares in it. So it has doubled the amount of uh, detail of our icing here. Um, it's basically doing what the subsurf modifier is doing, like it's smoothing it out, but it's doing it on a mesh level instead of like as an after step for rendering getting a little complicated. But anyways, you can see we've got double the amount of detail. Now, before we do anything else, in the bottom corner, you'll see you've got subdivide. Um, and there's a couple of options here, like you could increase the number of cuts and we get more and more and more detail. Um, but one cut is fine for what we need it. The one thing we do want to change is you'll see like it has double the detail, but it's still jagged, right? Um, and that's not a good look. We want it to be smooth. So it's, we want it to also for each detail, we want it to like average out the faces. So turn up the smoothness to one, and you can see that that edge there is now nice and smooth. Great, so that's how we're looking in object mode right now. Okay, so now we have enough detail, and you could see that if we were to grab one of these uh, vertices here, vertex, <laughs> vertices, vertex, eh, the people in the comments are like, you keep using the wrong term. I swear it's vertices for for plural, vertex, singular, and I stand by that. I don't know. Um, if I was to grab a single vertex here and I was to uh, pull it down, and I want to use proportional editing for this. I want to keep that turned on. But if I was to do that, you can see the rest of the, the icing comes with it. And I really only just want that edge there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that edge there. And this is a common shortcut. I know I'm throwing shortcuts at you like it's uh, rice at a wedding. I don't know where that's from. <laughs> but uh, it's alt left click. Okay, so if, if you're on an edge there, just hold down alt and then left click and you're selecting an edge. That's the whole, uh, you can select the whole loop like that as well, like the whole loop, um, or in this case, yeah, just the whole edge, right? So with that selected there, I'm gonna invert my selection, which you could do by going to select invert, or you can just remember the, the hotkey, which is control I. And then another hotkey <laughs> is hide. So I'm gonna temporarily hide this by hitting H, okay? To bring that back, it's alt H, um, and then H is hiding it. So it's just temporarily taking it away so that uh, so that you don't affect it, right? Okay, so whoo, we finally we finally got an edge with enough detail that we can start adding in detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select one of these uh, these little ver ver one singular vertex and I am going to move it down. Okay, now one thing you'll note is that when you do this, if you were to move it, move it down here, using proportional editing as well, um, it'll start to go through the donut. And you know you could move around and then pull that part out, etc. That's very fiddly. It would be great if the vertices stuck to the mesh underneath it. And we can do that by going up here. There is a snapping option. So you can snap um, by turning that on. And then we want to change what it snaps to. Um, by default, it's increments, which means that like it'll stick to singular like grid floors, 
right, which is definitely not what we need. We instead want to change it to face. So snap to face. And then if I pull it down, you'll see that it is sticking to the face. But I don't want just that to stick to the face. I want all of them to stick to the face. So I'm going to uh, select project individual elements. And then when I do that, all of the vertices that are being affected are going to be uh, sticking to the underlying face underneath it. And that's what we want. Yay. Okay, so let's do that a couple of times. Let's just go around it. And um, you'll notice also there are different uh, types of proportional fall off. Like, for example, if you were to use sharp, then you would get kind of like that kind of uh, like detail, right? So you, that can be kind of cool, depending on what sort of thing you want. So here's the thing, like, like this step is actually kind of, it's a little bit fiddly because you can, without, if you're not careful, you can get kind of like repetitive looking um, repetitive looking icing, right? Like, duh, 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 duh. like it just looks a little bit too uh, machined, like a little bit too, I don't know what the term is. Like it doesn't look natural, that's the term. <laughs> so anyways, um, that's pretty good. Okay, that's, well, it's okay for now. What I wanna do now though is like, th this is like okay for like the overall, like just the edge of an icing, like being just a little bit jagged. But I also wanna create some parts that are like dribbling down. Because if there's one thing I've learned from looking at Google Images, donuts on Google Images, is that uh, yeah, a lot of them have like dribbled down icing. Um, I mean, to be fair, I think like the more commercial it is, the more I think they sort of dip it in a thing and then uh, it's like a cluggy kind of icing so that it doesn't dribble as much. Like it look, it does look kind of like a hat. You could do that if you want, but I want to go, f I just want to make it look a little bit like more, more delectable, like something you want to like, ooh, I want to eat that, right? So I want to, I just want to make parts of it that are like dribbling down it. So in a couple of areas on here, what I want to do is I want to select two vertices and then, like if I was to like drag that, drag that, drag that down, you see that we don't have enough detail here, right? Because like parts of it are now sticking through because it's going to be, um, and don't copy what I'm doing now, but I'm just showing you like that's a huge face there. So part of it is like clipping through the donut. So I don't want to do that. What I do want to do though is I want to select two vertices and then I'm going to hit E. So this is a new hotkey for you, but this is extrude. And now if I pull that down, it hasn't moved those two, two vertices there. They're staying the same, but it's created two new ones and it's pulled them down. Um, so it's now basically creating another face. And now if I was to bring back the rest of the mesh, that is how it looks. Whoops, right there. Um, and if you were to obviously... The reason you're just seeing that part is because the rest of it's hidden, right? Because we we temporarily hid it. Um, but that that's kind of what I want to do. So I'm just going to create. You don't want to do this too much because this is actually you know coming to you know the artistic eye and everything like that. I want to help you guys make a good looking donut. Um, in this case, I, I grabbed three. You'll see. Uh, like if you do things repeatedly without um, like you, you want to give emphasis to things. Uh, emphasis, what am I talking about? Do you want to make parts, parts of it that stand out from the rest? So if you just did like, like there to there and then did there to there and then there to there and did like dribbles all the way around it in evil increment, even increments, um, it would just look fake. So you want to do it kind of randomly. So um, yeah, somewhere there. I'm sort of picking an area which is like already slightly like pulling down to kind of, yeah, like you're, you're a bit, basically you're creating the look of, uh, you know, it was weighty icing and that part had too much weight to it. And so it actually dribbled down the edge there. So this part here, I'll grab as well. I'll grab three of these and I'll pull them down. Um, and by the way, S, I'm using S to scale. So I've got three vertices there and I'm just, just scaling, right? So this is why it's good to know those those hotkeys G, R, and S that I mentioned at the at the the start there, because um, it's used everywhere. That's the good thing about Blender is once you've learned the hotkeys, they are applicable whether you're looking at nodes, whether you're in edit mode, object mode. It's all basically the same G, R, S. They're they're kind of everywhere. Unlike the Adobe Suite, which has got like Photoshop 
After Effects, Illustrator. They've all got like all different hotkeys and it drives me insane. It's like, you're the same company. Why can't you just like, let's have a company meeting. Let's figure this out. Ah, anyway, Adobe. So I'm going to just keep doing this a couple more times. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, maybe one more here. Uh, one, two, three. Mm, that's a little bit too predictable. That's the word I was looking for. Predictable. You don't want it to look predictable because real dribbling icing would not look predictable. But there we go, right? Okay, so I hope this step wasn't too confusing for you, but even if you can't do the extruding step, it's, you know, it's still gonna be okay. You're still gonna be all right. Um, it, your icing's gonna look fine. Really, we're just trying to make it look a little bit more random than just a hat sitting on top. Now, the next step, we will actually do like sculpting and we will like add in like, like droplets, like, make these things look less weird than they currently do. Um, we'll get to that next. But one final thing before we get to the next part is uh, you'll see that like the edge of this, like the edge of this like drip here, like all the way around it, like it's kind of like it's wrapping into itself, even though I don't think real icing would look like that. Like this part here wouldn't be like a complete glob unless it was like just wet and it just formed, you would see that kind of rolling fall off there. Anyway, what I'm saying is, is right here on this solidifier thing, we can actually create a crease on the inner part of it and it will make it look like it's hugging the donut underneath it a lot better. And immediately when you do that, the icing looks just immediately way better. Um, so there we go. All right, so that's it for this part. It looks okay. In the next part, we're gonna do some sculpting. So I will see you in that video once you click it. See you there.